What up, what up, welcome back to the channel, I'm ODIJ and we are locked in. The new series Across just dropped on Amazon Prime, and if you know, there's eight episodes, so we will be doing one episode a day from Saturday to Saturday, and of course, this is episode one, The Hero Complex. Now, I'm going to try to keep these recaps in between 10 to 15 minutes and sum up the main points so we can kind of connect the dots, because I have watched a couple of these episodes, and you have to pay close attention, because we're going to be on detective work also with Cross and try to figure out what the heck is going on. Now, before we jump into this and we break down episode one, if you like this kind of content, detective work, mystery, thriller, crime, and drama, well, I think Cross might be the show for you. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. I'm on that road to 75,000 subscribers. We just hit the 50,000 mark, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So make sure you hit that like button. But let's go ahead and jump into it. This is the recap of episode one. Cross on Amazon Prime. Hero Complex. We start the episode off with our guy Alex Cross and his wife Maria Cross. Across from him is his partner Samson and his wife. Now they're out here watching the Washington Redskins. Unfortunately, they live in D.C. and the Redskins are their team because we know that they are trash. But we see Alex and his wife. They're kissing and Samson is low-key hating, talking about they don't even do this much talking. They just doing this for a show. Well, she ends up getting up and she says that her and Samson's wife they're going to powder their nose. So we see that the dynamic between Alex and his wife is very, very close. After Maria gets up to go in the bathroom, Alex and Samson, they get to talking a little bit. And out of nowhere, we hear gunshots. Pow, pow, pow. But by the time Alex gets over there, all he sees is Maria laying on the floor. Samson takes his wife and leaves. And we see that Detective Cross, he doesn't even call the police or try to administer CPR, resuscitation, try to bring her back. He's just sitting there. So he actually froze up under pressure. We fast forward a year later and we see Cross at his desk. And in the interrogation room, there's a detective, Arkbar, and they're talking to this suspect. Now, this suspect is basically a racist mother effer trying to get up under his skin and not confess to this murder of his wife. But he does say something and Alex Cross picks up on it. Now, we know that he's racist and he calls one of the detectives boys. So Alex Cross goes in here. And remember, Alex Cross, he's a detective, but he's also a doctor with a Ph.D. in psychology. So when he goes in here, he's picking this man's mind. He's like, you know what? You know what free chicken is? It's an army term. It's where you basically cut the corners and take the easy route to get somewhere. But he picked up on one statement that this suspect said, and he went along and went with it. And the term that he heard the suspect say was life's fitful fever. Basically saying he feels guilt, but he never admitted anything to it. Now, of course, he's a doctor. He has a Ph.D. in psychology. He picked up on it. And also, he was up under the suspect's skin because you know how it is. Men to men, it's, it's an ego thing. And he said, my dick's bigger than yours. And that right there made the suspect fold. And we see that Alex Cross is somebody you don't want to mess with because he's in your brain before your brain could even figure it out. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot that you have to pay attention to. There's a book here. We see some man coming down these spiral staircase and he drops a book down. He has surveillance. And there's a young man, an African-American male that is sitting in the chair. Of course, this is still early in the season. So we got to figure out what we're going to do with all of these clues. But they're showing us this for a reason. Now, whoever this unknown suspect is, he has a thing of serial killers in trying to make other people look like said serial killer now the young man that's in the chair he has dreads and we see a man on the left we're trying to figure out what is the connection between it and as i mentioned he had dreads and the guy in the book didn't have dreads so we've seen him cutting off the dreads while he had them tied up then he places this man in a vehicle and these kids find it and of course the police are going to be notified about it cross and samson when they get to work their assistant comes out and he has a bouquet of flowers and he's saying that there's a secret admirer that's been sending flowers and flowers and flowers and gifts to Cross. But he's also like, hey, Cross, Lieutenant wants to see you because this is official police business here. But we don't know who the secret admirer is. Once they get into the office, Chief and Lieutenant are both in here and they're saying that Amir Goodspeed, the man that was found in the vehicle, is an ex-drug dealer, ex-game banger. Why is the city in uproar about this crook, this criminal? But Cross, he's well known in the streets and he's saying, no, he's a reformed criminal, but he is now an activist. He wouldn't do any of this. So what the chief wants is to take a black man to go out there 
and be in front of this case, be assigned to this case so the community will feel a little more comfortable with a black man working a black victim's case. But Cross says, I'm not going to be the token and I'm not. I repeat, I'm not doing any speeches. As of right now, no one is going with the, oh, this might be a homicide. They're all thinking it's either an accidental death, an overdose. But Samson and Cross, they're both looking at it like, we need to do a little bit of an investigation on this. And they're like, nah, this is just, it is what it is. Let's close this case up and let's keep it quiet and get it over with. But of course, we know Alex Cross ain't about to let no case go unsolved. Cross is out in the streets and he's going over to Amir's family's house. And when he gets there, there's a woman by the name of Malika. And everyone knows Cross and she's like, what are you doing here? Did your boss send you here? Now, of course, Cross is trying to figure this out, but his boss also assigned him to the case. Now, when we get in here, we find out that Amir is a Muslim. We know that he wouldn't take drugs because he's diabetic and meth and diabetes. It wouldn't mix. He would go straight into a coma. But there was two bags of meth found in the vehicle. So she's saying that the police covered it up. Now, he has a friend in here, Tavon, who is sitting at the table. Now, Tavio is Amir's best friend. And he's like, he wouldn't be on no drugs because everyone in the city knows me. And they know if he was to buy any drugs, they would come to me about it. And they just wouldn't sell them. So basically, they're clearing up everything, saying what the news and what you guys are reporting isn't what happened to Amir. Later on that evening, Alex goes home. He's talking to his family. He has a kid named Damon. He has a kid named Janie. And his nana mama, which is his mom, she's actually at the house helping him out. But he's getting ready to go out on a little night on the town while his daughter has track practice. But when he leaves, there's a suspicious vehicle sitting out front. And we're all wondering, who is this? Who could this be sitting out front? Now, whoever was in this vehicle, they end up breaking into the house. And what we see them do is plant a scarf inside of this closet. Now, it's a Washington Redskins. And if you remember, at the beginning of the episode, we seen Maria wearing a Washington Redskins scarf. Well, remember that night on the town that Alex was getting prepared for? He meets up with a woman by the name of Elle. And when they get there, man, this is a place that even I probably wouldn't even show up to. You got to wear a suit on a Tuesday night. This doesn't look like anything for me. But when he gets there, Elle, she looks amazing. But there's a gentleman by the name of Ed that shows up. And him and Elle, they know each other. And he's saying that we're going to raise over six figures for your foundation. He looks over and he sees Alex Cross and he says, I, you know what? I know you. I know you've been working very hard in these streets and I've been following the case. It's just it's so awful for someone to lose a loved one because it's happened to me before. But you know what? Actually, I call in a lot of favors throughout the city. So here's my card. I can put you on the list to come to some of my events. Now, Alex Cross, he has a Ph.D. in psychology. He's not really the party in type. But L says, we'll see if he sticks around long enough. Whoever broke into the house, he's getting ready to leave after they place the scarf into the closet. But as he's getting ready to leave, the lights turn on and it's little Janie. She has to come up here and gather her shoes because she forgot them. Now, he ends up hiding in the closet and it's a close call because if Janie was to go in the closet to look for her shoes, it may have been over because we did see a blade. We get introduced into another character by the name of Shannon. We don't know much about her, but she does show up and she's picking up some coffee. Now, whoever this is giving her the coffee, he ends up taking a picture of Shannon and he sends it to somebody. We're not too sure. This is just something new. You know how it is when you're doing detective work. We're trying to piece everything together as it comes to us. Now, what we do see is a tattoo on the left wrist. And this tattoo matches the book that we've seen in the basement of the building where Amir was when we first started the episode. So things are starting to connect, but it's not making sense yet. Now they go to the coroner's office for a mirror and the coroner is saying, I don't think that this is a suicide because whoever this gentleman is, Mr. Amir Goodspeed, it looks like he ate before it was all over. He had pork chops, mashed potatoes. He had a brownie with extra sprinkles, but this has cross wondering, wait a minute. He's Muslim. He doesn't eat pork. His mother said that he doesn't eat pork. So for Cross, a lot of things are going through his mind. And the coroner saying, this doesn't look like an overdose. You know how shows are. We start getting introduced to more and more characters because this is the first episode. And we see a gentleman by the name of Bobby Trey. 
Now, Bobby Trey, he was a former police officer, and he goes into the barber shop, and he's getting ready to get lined up while he's eating his food, but he gets a text message, and on this text message, he says there's a vehicle in front of his place, and it has some weird tags on it. So he sees this, but he doesn't get a chance to get this haircut. He has to dip out and go figure out what the heck is going on. Cross takes back all the information to the chief, and he's telling the chief, look, this isn't a suicide. This isn't an accidental overdose. Here goes the information from the forensics. Here goes the information from the coroner. He doesn't eat pork. He had a full meal. He wasn't unalive himself because he has diabetes. He would go into a coma. Now, the chief, she's trying to clear things up because the biggest thing that can happen within a police station or a police force is a scandal or a botched crime that they can solve. So Alex calls her out and says, are you trying to solve a crime? or trying to handle a PR situation. So the chief says, you have 48 hours to make this work, Cross. So you know we got to work overtime. Now, Cross is putting in that work. We get introduced to an agent by the name of Vega. They in there joking around. But Cross gets a phone call from the school. Nana Mama calls and says, the school said that Damon is acting up. So when they get there, of course, we know that the Washington Redskins, they have changed to the commanders. So you're not allowed to wear the Washington Redskins paraphernalia in the school, but Damon has it on. And when Cross gets here, he looks and says, where did you get that scarf from? Damon says, oh, I, I got it out of mom's closet. He's like, you got it out of mom's closet. But remember, mom got shot with the scarf on. He's looking, how, how did you get this? So this brings up a lot of things running through Cross's mind. He goes to Samson, hey, take this scarf, run the forensics on it. You actually got me in trouble because you told on me and I got suspended. He's like, I thought they were going to send you to the shrink. Well, all that behind us, we got to move forward. So Cross rushes to the house and he gets a security system put up because now he knows whoever put this scarf in the house, they've been around the house. They've been watching them. So he needs to have video proof so he can protect his family. Cross is on the move. We got 48 hours. Now, there's an FBI agent by the name of Kayla. Him and Kayla, they've known each other. They've been around the city. They interact. And what he's trying to do is get her to speed up the process because there was a phone call to a burner phone. And, you know, the FBI has way more resources than your local police department. Now, Kayla is like, I could do that, but, you know, it's going to cost you something, Alex. And Alex is like, listen, whatever it's going to take, I need that done. Because not only does he need to solve this case, he's starting to think that things are connected to him with someone breaking into his house. So Kayla, she's the FBI, but we could use her. Now, the gentleman we've been seeing in these basements is the guy, Ed. Now, you remember Ed is the guy that we seen meeting up with L, saying we're going to raise all this money, and he knew a little bit about Alex Cross. Now, he's making a Dayton profile, and the woman that we seen, Shannon, that was picking up the coffee, he's actually made a profile, and he matched with her. But the photo that he put on there, wasn't of him it was of someone else cross and samson they end up going over l's house for a little dinner party now she has some friends some colleagues over there and before it all starts samson and cross they get into it a little bit because cross is saying listen dog i know what my wife had that scarf wasn't on her when they took her in so whoever this is they're messing with me they broke up my house but they end up going to sit down they put that behind them. that's just two brothers having an argument but this gentleman that we see on the screen right now, he's like, oh, yeah, I do all of this. I'm amazing. Wait, you're a police officer, the same one that is getting defunded by L, the same one that would go out there and put our people behind bars. Now, Cross, he has a lot on his plate. Now, this is a whole environment I wouldn't even go to because there's a lot of people I don't know and I necessarily wouldn't want to talk to anyway. They keep going back and forth. He's messing with Cross. Cross is a little upset. So he says, hypothetically, what if someone was to get up and whoop yo, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Who are you going to call it in? Oh, you would call the police. So they get into a little scuffle, but it's really not a scuffle. It's more of Alex manhandling this guy. Throws him against the wall and they end up breaking these glasses that had been in Elle's family from her mother to him from her mother's mother. Just been in the family line. And they're like, Alex, you got to go, bro. This temperature is out of control. After things calm down, he has to talk to L. And of course, we know he's still dealing with the passing of his wife. It's been a year, but that was his best friend. And he's telling L straight up, you know, I had to go get help. I had to work on myself. 
I have a hero complex. And you know what that means? I got to try to save everybody. But she tells him something very important. And I always say this. You need to start worrying about yourself first. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to save anyone else. We found out that Alex can actually play the piano. When on Sundays, he wakes the kids up. So we see Damon go into Janie's room like, come on, get up. If you don't get up, then dad ain't going to stop playing the piano. And in order for him to stop playing, it takes both of the kids to be up. And they both got to give him a kiss on the cheek. Now, while they're waiting on Janie, Damon is down here and he's explaining that he gets mad that his mother is gone also. Sometimes he gets so mad, he doesn't know what to do with himself. But, of course, this is just the grieving process. You can't tell anyone how to grieve. As the investigation goes on, Cross is relieving some stress at the gym. And in comes a lady with some very valuable information. That burner phone that they're trying to get, Kayla got the information. Well, there was a security camera inside the store where the burner phone was bought. And guess who bought the burner phone? Tavio, the one that was at the house that said they were basically like brothers. They try to go and get Tavio for questioning. He's at the memorial of Amir, but when they chase after him, he starts shooting at him. He ends up running into an apartment, and there's a lady that he holds hostage in there. And they're telling him, we just want to talk to you. That's it. We don't want to do anything else. He eventually lets the hostage go, and they arrest him. The only thing is, once they arrest Tavio, everyone's outside. They got him in handcuffs trying to get through the crowd, and out of nowhere, we hear a sniper go off. Pa-cow! Well, R.I.P. to Tavio. So that answer that we were going to get from him about this burner phone and what happened, we have no idea now. A lot is going on in these streets, and Cross, he has it bad. He's trying to figure it out because now the police, they're being accused of two murders, Amir and Tavio. So when he gets home, there's another bouquet of flowers that was sent to the house. He's like, what the hell? He goes and asks the delivery guy, who sent this? He said, I don't know, I just deliver. When he gets back in the house, he sees a photo of his family, and now it really has him wondering, who is watching me? But he ends up getting a phone call. He's like, who is this? He said, don't worry, we'll meet soon enough. And then they hang up on him. So man, there's a lot going on. This mystery is unsolved at the moment. All right, there you go to recap of episode one, Hero Complex of Cross. Let me know what you're thinking. If you were Detective Alex Cross, would you have given up on this case already? Or would this make you even angrier? Put that fire up under you to make you want to go connect the dots and figure all of this out. Because this seems like a lot to just be thrown on the case. And this is the first day of the case. But let me know what you think. I'm ODIJ. This is day one of the eight day recaps of Cross. Tune in tomorrow, same time for episode two. Let me know what you think. I'm Odi J. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.